Okay, I've had a few people <clears throat> um, a little bit uh, confused about the pressure and stuff that's going on with the can and why the can uh, actually crushes. So I thought I'd just explain it a little bit while you're uh, doing up your labs. So we have a pop can, <laughs> okay, it's a little big, <clears throat> on a stove. And we've put some water in it. So I've got some water in the bottom of that. We heat the stove up. So get the burners get hot. And so what happens is that some of this water that is in a liquid form converts into a gas. Okay, well, let me write it over here somewhere. So it becomes a gas. So we have some gas there. And of course, we have an opening at the top. And so uh, it gets converted to gas as this water bubbles and starts to boil. So it changes at 100 degrees Celsius, it changes from a liquid to a gas. So you get quite a bit of gas here. And remember that kinetic molecular theory, this gas is bouncing off the walls. And that's what's creating the pressure inside this can. <clears throat> okay, so um, it's creating so much pressure that um, uh, fortunately the can has an opening where you probably saw some steam coming out when the uh, water was boiling. So we have all of these things and they are creating pressure on the side of the can. Okay, so now it's hot, steam is going, and now what you have to do is take that uh, can, here's our can, and we flip it over and we put it inside the ice. Okay. So uh, uh, we've got our ice cube down here and uh, our opening is here. <clears throat> but we've sealed that opening because it's under the, underwater now, right? So we've sealed that opening so um, the gas can't escape anymore. So what's happening then is that that water probably rushed, of course, to the bottom. Um, but all of that gas that was up here uh, is now um, uh, in a second, and it actually happened very quickly, uh, the temperature changed so that a lot of that gas that was up here went and it condensed into water. So instead of having lots of gas like this, we had, uh, just a sec, let me erase these little things I put in there. So instead of like maybe here, and I'm just throwing out numbers, just whatever. So maybe I had a thousand, there would have been millions but or billions um, of molecules of water floating out there. <clears throat> molecules of steam floating out there. And now suddenly because of this drop in temperature, then a lot of those molecules that were steam have now become liquid. And so... If you look at the pressure then that's inside this can versus the pressure that's in this uh, this can, this one will be significantly, significantly less because there are a lot of these gas molecules have now disappeared and then they're now water molecules. So the pressure that is being exerted on the sides of that can is way less than the pressure that was exerted in this one. So atmospheric pressure is pressing down on everything all the time. So it was pressing down on this, uh, but it's now pressing down on this. And because a lot of these molecules of gas went back into water, it created uh, low pressure inside here. So there's low pressure inside here, whereas atmospheric Atmospheric pressure is very high, and uh, uh, the pressure from the atmosphere is what crushed that can because inside the can there's low pressure. Okay, hopefully that clarifies what's going on with your can crush experiment. If it doesn't make quite uh, sense, you can always email me and I can try to explain it again. Or you can also look up on YouTube and just look for the can crush experiment explained. And there's other people that explain it as well. All right, hope that helps out.